the web search functionality is now within ChatGPT. So if you're a plus or an enterprise user, you'll be able to access this through GPT 4.0 or GPT 4.0 mini right now. So I'm just going to give you a quick look on what this looks like. If you want to access the search functionality, you can forward slash and explicitly set the search functionality. You'll be able to have some trending suggestions here where you can just select that. So today's show on Halloween 2024, what it will look like for a search, you'll have your search results. You'll also have these citations that it's using on the right hand side here. You'll be able to see them in line here. You have this tooltip that you can hover over and it explicitly says where the source is from. If it's using the New York Post or People or whatever the source might be, it's going to say that and not just give you a number within the annotation there. There is also the ability, as you see here, where you'll have YouTube videos right in line with your results. And you can also say things like what is Apple's stock price? And what's neat with this is they have generative UI components that are built in. You'll see here the response is streaming out and then it will also give me this interactive stock chart that I can use here. If I try a bit more of a complex query and I say compare Apple and Microsoft stock, we see that it's referencing the sources. And in this case, it's not actually giving me an overlay within the chart. I think these generative UI components are definitely going to be an area where we'll start to see more and more within this offering and chat GPT. But right off the bat, it is a pretty neat experience. Now, the question that a lot of people are asking, is this going to replace Google search? Now, over the long term, it's an interesting question. I don't think this is necessarily going to be the case in the short term, but it definitely is a pretty interesting direction in terms of how you can leverage these new generative AI tools right now. Now, one of the bigger questions that came to my mind is how this will affect something like perplexity, which is really their value proposition. There's a ton of other features that they do really well. And I've been a longtime user and fan of what perplexity is doing. And it's going to be interesting to see over time whether perplexity is able to hold their market share with competitors starting to come in the space, like with ChatGPT search. And I'd imagine we'll also have this internet enabled search functionality into popular tools, whether it's Claude or some of the other providers. What's interesting is right around the exact same time that this search functionality dropped, we also had this announcement from Google Gemini where you can now access search results within your prompt. If I say something like, what is the latest news today in tech? and I send in that query. Now, what's great with this is if you are a developer and you do want to build with that internet enabled search functionality right within an LLM's response, you'll be able to do that from Gemini where it will return the sources for you and also give you this aggregate response. Whereas with the chat GPT announcement, it is really just built into their consumer facing app at this time. Now, in terms of the internet results, you do also have the ability to try again without the search functionality. But where I think this could be useful is say if you want to set up a new feature from a service or an API that maybe just came out, you could potentially just ask with the search functionality. If I say give me an example of setting up the real-time API from OpenAI's docs, I'll send that through. It's going to search the web there. We see all of the different references there. And so at a glance, it's giving me what looks to be what might be a working example. Now, I'd actually have to try this to see if this was the case, but it's in the direction where you can see where this is going. And it can definitely be helpful as they begin to build on this and develop this. Where this was initially really popularized was with perplexity. If you haven't used perplexity before, this is essentially what it looks like. This is the free tier, mind you. On the pro tier, there are some big benefits where you'll be able to access other models like Sonnet or Croc or the GPT series of models you'll be able to access within it as well. And it's a similar sort of experience here, right? So you have the answer, you also have the sources. It's going to aggregate those results and give you that synthesized answer with the references in line. In terms of the accuracy of the results, I wouldn't be surprised if Perplexity is ahead. They have been doing this for a couple of years now, whereas ChatGPT, this is a brand new offering for them. That's just something to be mindful of. So another thing with this is you can search for images. So if I just say, show me images from OpenAI's developer event in London, we can see what it will generate for us here. And here we see that we have the images here. So we have some promotional material, and then we also have some images that you might otherwise get from something like a Google search. At a glance, these don't look like they were from the event. Mind you, I saw most of the images on X. I don't know if that's a source that they'd be able to access within this capability. One final thing that was interesting when I was setting this up 
is as soon as you enable the search functionality, there is the ability to set this as your default search engine in your browsers. They do have a Chrome extension. I set it as the default from Google just to try it. Instead of routing to Google by default, it will route you as a query to ChatGPT. I'm gonna try that over a number of days to see if I enjoy that. It is quite a bit different than being used to Google for so long, but at the same time, I see the potential where it could potentially be helpful. I just wanted to do a really quick one today to show you the search functionality. Let me know in the comments below, will you be using this over Google search? Will you be using this over perplexity? And if you have any general thoughts on your experience with using this new functionality, let me know, let all of us know within the comments below. But otherwise, if you found this video useful, please comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.